puts up a kick. Not much pressure on Jared Haney, takes it comfortably. Steps one, steps two, steps three. He's away! Jared Hain with a catch and a run. They're not going to catch him. On May 19th, 2006, a lanky and adrenaline-filled lad by the name of Jared Hain made his professional rugby league debut at the age of 18. Over the next 13 years, he would dominate the sport achieve his dream of playing in the NFL, and attempted to represent his country via the 2016 Rio Olympics. I'm drawn to his story because in so many ways, it represents what I'm personally trying to do on YouTube, which is constantly progress. Once you've achieved your goal, set a new one. Never become complacent, and never let that fire inside burn out. What's good, fellas? I hope you're having a fantastic day and staying safe. Now let's talk about Jared Hain. Now a lot of the US audience won't understand what rugby league is and it's actually a completely different sport than rugby, just FYI. So I'll keep it simple by saying Jared achieved a lot. Two-time MVP, represented Australia in the World Cup and represented New South Wales in the heated state of origin rivalry. And that's just listing a few things. This guy was incredibly accomplished. In his rookie season alone, he scored 17 tries in just 16 games, including the 46-12 blowout of the Newcastle Knights, where he scored 5 tries by himself. He grew up in a housing commission in the southwest Sydney suburb of Minto, with his two siblings and a single mum. Things weren't always easy, but it's what he says drove him to always be the best at what he did. His father Manoa also had a solid professional rugby league career, spanning over seven years, so the foundation was laid out for Jared right from the jump. But after accomplishing so much in the NRL year in and year out, while simultaneously never letting that fire burn out, is what ultimately led to the idea of even attempting to make a jump to the NFL. I just need to point out how absurd and how unlikely it is that an NRL superstar would ever have a chance of making the NFL. We are talking about competing with freakishly good athletes coming out of college on a yearly basis that have dedicated their life to this game and perfecting their craft. And then there's this 27 year old foreign athlete who's never put on a helmet. In 2011, Jared actually tried to go to college in the US. However, since he never received his HSC from finishing high school, he was ineligible. The HSC is something you can go back and complete at any age, but if you're one of the highest paid players at the highest level of sports back home, then I kinda see why he didn't choose to pursue that route again. But I believe the seed, at least on a personal level, was planted at this time. Like He was really dedicated to making this move. He would run training sessions with the University of Technology Sydney between the NRL season and the Rugby League World Cup. His friends would joke around saying you have the perfect build at 6 foot 2, 220 pounds to be a running back. This man even requested Gridiron Australia, yes, that's a real league, to set up tryouts with NFL teams, but ultimately was denied because of his commitments to the World Cup. Whilst his attempted transition was making waves on Australian TV, with fans and critics alike, there was barely any coverage on the subject in the United States, and rightfully so, like, who cares, right? <laughs> Well, this is where it gets crazy. There was a particular NFL running back who saw Jared Haynes highlights and had heard about his desire to play in the NFL, saying, and I quote, you know, he actually looks like an NFL running back. You know who that man was? Reggie Bush. Like, no shit, this actually happened. On a promotional trip to Sydney in June 2014, Reggie Bush personally watched the state of origin that Hain represented New South Wales in, and they would go on to develop a pretty good friendship. It wasn't too long after that meeting before Bush stated Jared could play immediately if he made the switch, also stating that he guarantees Hain would make a final 53-man roster. When a legend like that has such high praise and belief in you, there's no way you're gonna let him down, right? Just a few months later in September, he'd go on a 10-day trip to visit the Seattle Seahawks and get some work in, as well as making a stop by the University of Washington. And when he got back, no hesitation, he made it official. At the same time, the Parramatta Eels, the team he'd initially played for, was working on a five-year deal that would pay him $1.35 million per season which was more than 20% of the team's entire salary cap, which at the time would have made Jared Hain 
the highest paid NRL player. Wait, 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 1.35 million per season. Oh, now I see why he wanted to go to the NFL. Sheet. Eventually, all of Jared's hard work would pay off. On March 3rd, 2015, he inked a three-year deal with the Niners worth 1.5 mil and a 115,000 guarantee should he not make the final roster. And now this is where things really start to get wild. I remember sitting down and watching his first preseason game against the Texans, and he played really well. He racked up 63 yards off of five carries, which included a 53 yard run. And I already know what you're gonna say, it was just preseason, and I understand that, but when I saw that 53 yard run, I was hype. Ran the gap, hit the safety with a clean juke, made a big play, but most importantly, he took full advantage of the opportunity he'd fought so hard to get. Just the next week against the Cowboys, he'd lead all rushes with 54 yards off of eight carries. At this time, he was also contributing on pun returns and had some success there. Nothing crazy, but definitely above average to say the least. But by September 2015, his dream had come true. He was officially a part of the 49ers 53-man roster. It was dope because he was added to Madden 16 to use in franchise mode and even received an elite ultimate team card that had 95 acceleration, 93 carrying and a 90 juke move. Not bad at all. It was also dope since you could use Jared Hain in the rugby league live games, normally sitting around a mid 90 overall, you know, 95, something like that. So now you've got two nationally recognized leagues in two completely different parts of the world where you can play as the same guy. The hype at this time was unreal. I remember all of my mates at the time were saying, I told you so, and he's gonna tear up, he's gonna be a beast, etc. I wasn't a hater by any stretch, just more of a realist. He did well in preseason, but regular season hits a little bit different, you know what I mean? What was meant to be his first touch in the NFL with the bright lights and the hometown fans excited to see their new prospect, he muffed the punt. He shook back pretty fast though, only had 13 yards total off of four carries that game, but showed some nice moves on a nine yard rush in the third quarter. Overall, he contributed in eight games of the 2015 regular season with a short stint in the practice squad after week seven, basically jumping in wherever he was needed. He'd end up finishing the season with 52 yards off of 17 attempts and averaged about 9.5 yards per return off of eight punts. This wasn't exactly the start he was hoping for with no real highlight plays to keep the hype going, but there was no reason to not still be optimistic about a guy who'd never worn pads before, or so you would think. By May 2016, Haynes seemingly out of nowhere announced his retirement, claiming he wanted to play for Fiji in the Rugby Sevens at the 2016 Rio Olympics. And though he made the initial 23 member training squad, he unfortunately did not make the team that would compete in the actual Olympics. So now you're thinking, well, back to the NFL, right? You fought so hard to get there, but after just one year, it's, it's not your thing anymore? Well, around the time he left the NFL to try out for the Fiji rugby team, he also stated since the 49ers had just signed Chip Kelly ahead of the 2016 season, he didn't want to learn a new playbook. Bro, come on, come on. In 2015, Hain was accused of sexual assault by a woman in a San Jose bar. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, especially since there's not a lot of information about it, but I will say this. The woman filed a civil lawsuit against Hain in December of 2017, a whole year after he'd left the NFL, and by August 2019, he paid the alleged victim 100K. But what was the move after the whole NFL thing in 2016? Well, in August of that year, just three months after he'd retired, Hain signed a two-year deal in the NRL again, this time with the Gold Coast Titans that paid around 1.2 million per season. Again, making him the highest paid NRL player. In just his second game back, he kicked the game-winning field goal to keep his team's playoff hopes alive, proving to still be the same beast he was when he left. In 2018, he signed back with the Parramatta Eels in a farewell tour-esque season, stating it would be his last and he was also awarded a spot on the NRL's team of the decade. Not exactly the way I wanted to close out the journey, but in November of that same year, 
Payne again was accused of aggravated sexual assault from an incident in September of 2018. Payne pleaded not guilty and the trial was scheduled to start this month. He stated it's been a hard time for his family, but justice will be served. At the age of 32, he's currently retired from all sports and lives with his wife and daughter. As for my two cents with the NFL, regardless of what happened behind closed doors around 2015 and 16, I think Hayne had a chance to be a really solid return man since his position in rugby league where he dominated transitioned perfectly to that role and we've seen players like Devin Hester make a living off of pretty much returns alone. Really big what if question there. Still a really inspiring story that just goes to show that no dream is too big. Also kids, make sure you finish high school, all right? If Hain were eligible for college for getting that piece of paper, maybe he gets drafted and starts this whole NFL journey off with a legit shot to dominate.